Hey there fellow planeswalkers, it's Steve for Collector Mania, and welcome back to yet another episode of Alternative Tuesdays. Uh, today we're going to delve back into Brawl with Karn, Scion of Urza. So, it's really cool that in this format that we have access to run planeswalkers as our commander. That's something that is completely unique to Brawl, that we can't generally do in commander unless the planeswalker says otherwise. So, really cool space to play around with. Um, <laughs> so with that, we are playing a colorless deck in Brawl. So we had to fudge this a little bit. <laughs> Our land base is kind of wonky. We have a lot of lands that probably have no business being in there, but unfortunately with the rules set, we can't go back and grab wastes because they are not in the standard rotation. So hopefully in the future, we'll end up with maybe just one waste in a set somewhere that we can grab and put in here, or just maybe some more colorless lands that would help us out quite a bit. For now, we made it work. I think there's a total of 19 lands in here, which I think is just barely enough, especially with the mana rocks that we have. Regardless of that, we are probably ru running one of the best commanders in my opinion. Karn, Sign of Urza. So four, four colors cast, five loyalty, Planeswalker. Really ridiculous abilities. I mean, the first ability essentially draws you a card while exiling, exiling a card of an opponent's choice, so that's kind of wonky, but you can get it back with the minus one. And then the minus two is really what we're after here, creating zero zero tokens that have plus one plus one for each artifact you control. So, as you can guess, the entire deck is pretty much made of artifacts, so <laughs> that works out really well for us. Um, with that, let's go ahead and break into the deck here. So first up, we've got an Ornithopter. Uh, just a really good early game zero two that we can suit up with some of our equipments. It also just helps us once again with our minus two for Karn, so not bad creature at all. We've got a Walking Bliss, so probably one of the best creatures in the entire deck. Really good for pinging off smaller creatures or just finishing off opponents depending on where we are in the game. Really great mana sink. We've got a Hope of Garapor. I love being able to control the late game with this card. I mean, sometimes people aren't banking on you having a trick like this and they're, they're ready to fumigate and all of a sudden you have this and you just sacrifice it and then say, okay, well I'm going to kill you this turn, basically. So, pretty powerful. We've got a Gleaming Barrier. There are a few walls in here. I think they'll actually help us quite a bit because we are running a Planeswalker as their commander. So being able to keep Karn around as long as we can, you know, not having to recast it every two seconds could be kind of nice. <laughs> We've got a Voltaic Servant. Really good for untapping some of our bigger creatures that we'll see later on here. Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs. Another good untapped target, really. Uh, good way to just deal damage to our opponents. We have a ton of deserts in here, so it works perfectly. Watchers of the Dead. I think this is going to be really important for like the Muldrotha matchup because there's definitely going to be some Muldrotha brawl decks running around, so this is a key piece here. We've got a Chief of the Foundry, buffing our artifacts. Filigree Familiar, uh, kind of the standard version of Solemn Simulacrum. Foundry Inspector, making pretty much our entire library cost one less, it's really important. <laughs> Howling Golem. Scrap Trawler. Workshop Assistant, Armanthian Wall, Awaken Amalgam. I think this will actually be pretty powerful in here. Um, figuring in that basically all of our lands are different, this could get pretty big. I mean, obviously the max would be 19, but still, you know, having a 7 7 isn't bad. I've got a Golden Guardian. I anticipate this thing flipping around pretty easy for us since we have quite a few bigger creatures. And then it turns into a land, one of those lands that we desperately need because, like I said, we're pretty land light here. So this could be pretty important to get flipped early. There are a few in here, a few of these flip lands that I'll show you in a second that are pretty important, I'd say. Jorah's Familiar. Traxos Scourge of Krug. So this was originally the commander that I was going with, but I found that Karn just seemed to be, I don't know, so much better. <laughs> Traxos doesn't really have that much of a late game. And he dies to a ton of removal, but I don't think he's a terrible beater. I also, you know, depending on which way you want to run this, you could run Traxos as the commander and Karn in the deck, but like I said, I don't think that's the most optimal way to run this, but either way, it could be a lot of fun. Treasure Keeper. Mishra's Self-Replicator. This card's really, really cool. I like it a ton. Metalwork Colossus, so hopefully we can get a bunch of artifacts are out early and then make this guy cost next to nothing and then just cast him. That's pretty much our plan here. That rounds out our creatures. we got a few artifacts that kind of help us control the board or draw cards or, you know, mana ramp, all that kind of stuff. So, Pacification Array, uh, Universal Solvent, one of our 
really only removal spells. <laughs> Black Blade Reforged, I think this would be pretty cool. I mean, we hook this up to Traxos and start swinging at people. That could be really, really fun. Heart of Kirin. Perpetual Timepiece, one of our only ways to shuffle our library. Treasure Map, which flips into Treasure Cove. Urza's Tome, some card draw. Cultivator's Caravan, so this is pretty cool because it sides as Mana Ramp, but it also sides as an extra creature, so really just kind of cool. Great include, really. Forebear's Blade. Another Mana Rock here. Another Mana Rock. I've got Conqueror's Galleon, probably one of the best cards in the deck. I love vehicles. <laughs> Turning over to Conqueror's Foothold, one of the best lands in the deck, really. I've got Helm of the Hosts. Once again, we play this with Traxos or any of our other big guys and just start making copies of them. That could be pretty powerful. Thran Temporal Gateway. Pretty much our entire library comes into play for four mana at this point. Weatherlight. Gilded Lotus. Paradox Engine. All those untaps. Sky Sovereign Council Flagship. Planar Bridge. Really, really powerful in the deck. Then we're breaking into our lands here. So first up we got an Aether Hub. Obviously we're never going to need to use the energy, so it's just going to always tap for a colorless for us, which is exactly what we needed to do. Arch of Varaska, probably the best, another one of the best lands. Cascading Cataracts, this one's kind of wonky. I mean, <laughs> basically it's just an indestructible land that taps for colorless because we're never going to need to make five colors of mana, basically. Cradle of the Cursed, Dunes of Dead, Endless Sands, Field of Ruin, Grasping Dunes, Hostile Desert, Inventor's Fair, Painted Bluffs, Scavenger Grounds, really important once again, Sequestered Stash, Spire of Industry, Sun Scorched Desert, so our Survivor's Encampment, Unclaimed Territory, which is super awkward, but I guess we gotta do what we gotta do. Unknown Shores, Zephyr, and Void. And with that, that is the entire deck. So, like I said, I'm hoping that they really include something like Brawl into MTG Arena. I think this would be a perfect deck to kind of tool around with on a platform like that. Would I build this in paper? Yeah, if I had the time and money, I definitely would. I think this would be a lot of fun. Um, like I said, I'm really hoping that in the next set they give us at least two or three more colorless lands and maybe a few other uh, good artifact pieces, but this is one of my favorite types of decks to build. I love building color strategies. They're just, you know, so much fun to me. So entertaining because they're so off the wall. But with that, once again, I hope you guys have enjoyed the deck tech, and we will see you next Tuesday.